Good, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the dining room table of the Old Curiosity Shop. This is going to be a quick video because everything that you see here is currently listed in the old, uh, in the eBay store, yeah. And so you can go and check for measurements, mm -hmm. better pictures, full descriptions, and you'll get the whole nine yards. But uh, so, well, let's take a look at what's on the table and then um, I got to get out of here because I got to put my truck in the shop again. Oh, no. Oh, well. Hey, I'm happy that I have transportation. Look, we've got a lot of glass shades here for various needs. And look at these from the 1930s. This would be in a sort of a colonial revival style rather than the Art Deco style. And they're frosted shades, of course, you know, that sit down in upright um, sockets for ceiling fixtures. There are three. Now you say, oh, you're missing one. Well, not necessarily. Remember, those light fixtures in those days Sometimes had two lights, three lights, four lights, five lights. I've even seen six. From the 1930s bathroom, ooh, we're in the deco era now. 30s and 40s. How about those? Now, of course, you know, with something like this, it fits, uh, it's held in place by a fitter. A lot of these are two and three fourths inches. But as I said, I've got measurements in, in the um, description in the eBay store. Here's a cranberry shade, which can slide down over a uh, chimney, yeah, of an oil lamp. Or, because it's flared right here, it can be held in place with a fitter as well. Now I've got two shades. This was typical of the 20s and 30s. And these have hand-painted flowers on them. See there? These are painted on the outside rather than the inside. And so we have two of those. And then another um, shade. Now that's more on the amethyst side here we go again with colors. <laughs> it looks pink to me. No, see the difference? This is much more cranberry. Yeah. And this is much more on the amethyst side or purple side. That's for one of your student lamps. Oil lamps. Now, let me not forget... I'm going pretty quickly here because, as I said, I've got to get on, get out of here. There's uh, two more glass shades. 
with painted flowers on the outside. And those date to the 30s as well. There's a Mildred gravy boat. We know all about Mildred, produced by Mount Clemens. Here are two EAPG oil lamps that I'm selling together in one auction. Okay, threaded with brass. So you can do whatever you want. Turn them into oil lamps again. Or add sockets. Now this was in another video. This old circa 1920, probably homemade oak uh, table and chairs for a doll baby to play with. You know what I mean. <laughs> Made by Fenton. Amber Swirl Snowcrest. Now they are missing their bottoms. These are for candles. And there were little white milk glass bottoms that these would sit down in. You can find them. Mm -hmm. Or maybe someone needs um, a replacement shade or two. Beautiful candlesticks, circa, again, about 1920. Pretty glass with etched flowers on them or wheel cut flowers on them. This guy here is something else. You're gonna to have to go and, and check it out. This is rare. Now, how often do you hear me say rare? It's very rare, <laughs> rarely. The only reason I could find anything about this is because it has a patent number and I was able to look up the patent, but there were, there were none for sale <clears throat> on eBay, and none had sold in the last 90 days. It's a combination, very Art Deco and red plastic, so you put salt and pepper in it. The salt is always on, so to speak, and if I can focus with my poor old hand, you, you push... You're not being able to see it, but you know what happens. When you push, 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 you shut the thing off, right? There we go. The salt gets shut off and the pepper opens up. The pepper, um, so all in one. This was patented in 1936. Well, the gentleman who invented it, Mr. Richter, applied for the patent in 1936. I think he was granted the patent two years later in 1938. So... And right after our Bakers of America home economist, Miss Helen Reed, tells you about a wonderful new way to serve French toast for breakfast. Thank you, Mr. Niles. There is a new way to serve French toast, and it is wonderfully delicious. All you do is add two tablespoons of old-fashioned molasses to your regular French toast batter. Then dip the bread slices in the batter, fry them in the usual way, and serve them with powdered sugar. But be sure to fix plenty. Those second helpings are very important to your family's health. For when you make any kind of toast with enriched bread, you're giving your family vitamins and minerals they need every day. You see, when the bakers of America enrich their bread, they add energy-giving B vitamins, and they add iron that helps us build good red blood. A combo! Salt and pepper shaker. There's a little caddy for your drinks now i'm not going to bother to even try to tell you what color that is is it pink is it amber maybe it's maybelline that's pink and that is a set of inserts that would go down into a chrome holder which is no longer here <clears throat> But then, of course, that's what that is. And then uh, two more shades, Colonial Revival. The, probably in the 1950s, they had those floor lamps with the double, um, you know what I'm talking about. They look like oil lamps, like student lamps, right? And they would sit on the floor, and this would go on. This would go, well, this isn't the right colors. I think you know what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> 
<laughs> this would go over the light bulb and then a larger shade would go over the top like that. These aren't the right size. They are incompatible to each other, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Did I sound like Jerry Lee Lewis just then? Um, you know what I like. I don't even, um, okay, so anyway, I'll stop. That, goes, that is how that can be used as well. So we have very quickly talked, no, we skipped the anchor hocking, Waterford. Now, that's Waterford Crystal. You say, no, it's not, you big dummy. <laughs> it certainly is, but it doesn't have anything to do with lead content or Ireland. When glass was clear in the 30s, it was normally referred to as crystal. There's no lead in this and they don't really refer, there, there's no reference here to lead content. So we're not talking about lead crystal, crystal meaning clear. And Waterford meaning the pattern name given to this glass by Anchor Hocking. They did not call it waffle. People have started calling it waffle. And some of the glass collectors actually put waffle in their books, but some purists don't. Uh, so you, I've had people say, well, I saw it called waffle in one of my books. Yeah, you will. I don't remember which author it was, Mozzie, Jean Florence, or, um, uh, oh golly, um, Hazel Marie. But... Hawking, when this was new, it was called Waterford. That's the name that they gave to this pattern. And of course, you know, well, anyway, you'll see it referred to as sometimes just waffle or sometimes Waterf Waterford waffle. It came out in the 1930s, mid 30s. I love this pattern. And the only reason I'm selling these is because I already have a set of six and I don't need any more, but it's a simple crystal pattern and I like it. Okay, from the 30s, those. Um, let me back up here. I think we've seen it all. I was a quick one on this table. Yeah. Now, down here on the flow <laughs> is, my, is another pattern. And I kept promising you I was going to talk about it. And I am. <sighs> Once I clear the dining room table off and move this over talk about that um, but the Sun is coming through here it's early in the morning oh I've got one Christmas Christmas decoration I forgot to take down you see that over there all right we'll get to that I guess that's all I want to tell you about I'm going to walk over and take my truck to the shop and then walk back home I love that my uh, garage repair is within walking distance of my house and then the vintage Vinny should arrive in a couple of hours we'll use his car today and hopefully mine will be repaired by the end of the day so it is Thursday we're going live tonight me and Vinny we're going to do a show and tell okay so I hope you'll join us tonight probably around eight o'clock or so right here on this channel and then we're going to have a live sale on Friday night we'll be back again um Vinny's bringing things, and we're also going thrifting. So uh, it, it should be a pretty good time for both of us. I hope you'll join us. I'm trying to drag this out just a little bit to at least make my video, you know, like 12 seconds long, 12 minutes long. I guess I'll show you one of my console bowls I have displayed up here on a wonderful black glass base. There we go. It's sitting in there correctly. Just another way that you can use these black glass bases. This is all uh, painted with enamel. And that's, I hope there's no dust in the bowl. No? Nope. Okay, very good. And I didn't have any blue can. I didn't have, there would have been candlesticks to match this. Uh, at the moment, I don't have any. So I'm using 1920s uh, amethyst candlesticks which again don't match but there they are 
I'm going to take the red glass out of the china closet, but since I love the Homer Laughlin pattern here called Nautilus from 1936, we're gonna leave that pattern in for a while um, and enjoy it, that Art Deco pattern. Okay, enough trying to drag this video out. Let me just back all the way up or out and tell you thank you for watching. Thank you for shopping in the old Curiosity Shop eBay store. The link is in the description box below. And um, there are some other things listed there too that you don't know about. <laughs> so go check it out. Check it out. That's it. I'm now out. Talk to you later, everyone. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching. Wait for the cat. And so long for now. See you tonight.